right, continuing with our examples, if we take a look at number seven, this is an example of a discrete graph. So as I'm looking at this to decide if it's a function, I really want to see if I can put a vertical line through more than one point. And as I'm looking at this, these two points right here, I can draw a line through both of them. So this is not a function. Now, because this is a discrete graph, that means that we're doing a list of numbers instead of an inequality or interval notation. So again, domain is all of my possible x values. So instead of listing out each of those coordinates, I'm just going to use my graph. So we want to start with our smallest x value, and that's going to be this one. So it looks like that is at negative 1, 2, 3. So negative 3. My next set are going to be these two, and that has negative 2 for their x value. This one has an x value of 0 and an x value of 2. So there's my domain. And then range, same idea. So we could list the points out, and if you need to do that, that's fine. However, I'm just going to look at my graph. So now we're working our way from the bottom of our graph all the way up. So this is our lowest dot, so that's at negative 2. And then our next two are right here, so that has a y value of 0. And then this one has a y value of 1. And our last one has a y value of 2. So there's our domain and range. So again, remember, continuous graphs for domain and range have inequalities or interval notation. Discrete graphs have a list of numbers. All right, next one. So again, vertical line test. So I can draw my vertical line. I'm going through twice this time. So this is not a function. Not a function. Okay, but again, I can still always find domain and range because domain and range is a relation. And even though this is not a function, it is still a relation. So since it's a continuous graph, that means that we're going to have some type of inequality. So again, for domain, we're looking, is our graph expanding to the right? So as I'm looking at this, yes, on both sides of our graph here, it's expanding towards positive infinity on the x's. But there's no graph back here, so it's stopping at this point. So that means that I'm going to have everything bigger than whatever the x value is at this point. And here at this point, if I write out what this coordinate is, it is 1, 0. And again, because we're dealing with domain, we only care about the x value. So that means our x's, all of our x's, have to be greater than or equal to positive 1. So again, if we write that in interval notation, our smallest number is 1. It is included, so we would have a bracket. And then all the way up to positive infinity with a parenthesis. All right, range. So this time we're looking at our vertical expansion. So as I'm looking at this, this side tells me that our it's going to increase, so it's going up forever. And then again, on this side, it's going down forever. So that means that our graph is going towards positive infinity and towards negative infinity. So eventually, we're going to get to all the y's. So our range is going to be all reals. Or again, if we write this in interval notation, it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, last example for this set. So again, vertical line test. I'm trying to find a spot where I can go through more than once, but as I do my vertical line, there's no spot that will go through more than once, so this is a function. So domain, because it is a continuous graph, so I can take my pencil and trace along here, that means that we're dealing with inequalities. So again, domain is the x values. So as I'm looking at this, my graph doesn't expand in either direction. We have two stopping points on our x's. Okay. So that means that we're going to have a kind of a compound inequality, so an and statement. So really, my x's, all of my x's in this graph exist between these two points right here. So let's figure out what those points are. So on this side, this is going to be at let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0. And then on this side, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, so negative 4, since we're on the negative side, so negative 4, 0. 
So since we're dealing with domain, we want the x. So all of my x's are going to be between negative 4 and 4. So negative 4 has to be less than or equal to x, less than or equal to positive 4. So again, interval notation, the smallest number is negative 4, the biggest number is positive 4, and those are both included, so we would have brackets around these. All right, range. So that's our vertical expansion. So as we are looking at our graph, there aren't any arrows on it, so it's not going up and down forever. So again, it's stopping here, so at these two points, and then our vertical expansion, it's also stopping here. So let's figure out what this point is. So that point is at 0, and then 1, 2, 3, so negative 3. So as I'm looking at this, all of my y values as I trace along this graph are going to be between 0. So here's my y value at this point. So that's our range. And then again, we care about this one, so that's for the range. So all the y values live between 0, and then we get down to negative 3 and we go back up to 0 again. So we're not going to find any y values outside of that group. So again, we're going to have another inequality. So all of our y values exist between negative 3, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 0. So again, an interval notation, smallest number is negative 3, biggest is 0. Both of those numbers are included, so we would have a bracket. Now again, when you are trying to figure out domain and range, and we're going to be doing this all year, so it's very important that you understand this concept, that domain, we're looking for the horizontal expansion when we're dealing with continuous graphs. Range, we're looking at the vertical expansion for continuous graphs. Now again, if it's a discrete graph, like a number 7 here, then it's a list of numbers. Okay, but continuous graphs are going to be some sort of inequality.